Welcome back to Toyota Sports Talk. Always great to catch up with former Washington head coach Jay Gruden. Uh, great follow on Twitter. He's starting to get into the media space a little bit and sports betting. Did something with Colt McCoy. So great to have him on Toyota Sports Talk. Talk some rookie quarterbacks and kind of the rookies coming into the NFL. Jay, appreciate your time. No, oh, thanks for having me. It's always good to talk football. So what, what's new with you? Obviously, um, you're out of coaching for the time being. Are you enjoying it? What, what's life for Jay Gruden like these days? Oh, it's great. You know, I'm down here in Florida enjoying golf. I do some work with uh, 33rd team. also do some stuff with Underdog Fantasy, which, you know, we're on YouTube TV. It's a uh, clean pocket. Myself and Colt McCoy do some things, and Good. we're going to branch off and do some more things, preview in NFL teams, and uh, it's a lot of fun right now. So you like this media stuff? I like it. It's my only option right now. Yeah, yeah. But, but eventually, uh, ideally, you'd like to get back in coaching? I don't think so. You know, I, I really enjoy my time, and I'm 57 years old, and – uh, coaching really right now is for the younger yeah. coach right now. They're going after the younger people. And, you know, I had my time in Washington. I had a great time in Cincinnati and obviously a year in Jacksonville. So I'm fulfilled as far as my coaching goes. But uh, I also like to play golf a lot. Good, good. Well, I'm glad you're you're enjoying life right now. And I wanted to have you on because obviously you can give some great good perspective on rookies, right? So Washington right now, rookie quarterback, rookie class coming in. As a head coach, former head coach, what was the challenge of kind of integrating the rookie class, especially rookie quarterback, into your system? Yeah, it's a big challenge. You know, first and foremost, you got to make sure they get acclimated off the field, make sure they get where they're staying. You help them out to get their contract signed, get all the stuff off the field out of the way first so they're comfortable. And then once you get in the building, uh, there's always going to be a, a somebody there to work with the rookies. And then obviously you got to get them introduced to the strength coach, which is very important position coach. And then the coordinator and head coach, obviously. And, and you just start implementing your system. You build blocks every single day, put a block on top of each other and you start slow and, uh, make sure you, you find out what type of guy they are, how they're handling the information. And then you go out and you go out and, and, and execute and see how they do. Coaches, coaching staff can only do so much. How much did you rely on the veterans in the locker room or other players in the locker room to help these rookies along? Yeah, for sure. I think that's what starts with your core culture. Everybody likes to use the word culture. You want to have good veteran leadership, and that's important because uh, when rookies come in, they see a veteran guy who's making a lot of money, who has had a lot of success. They see him working hard, then naturally they're going to want to work hard, right? So it's very important to have those type of leaderships uh, on your football team, and if you don't, you better find them. Otherwise, your team's going to be in uh, disarray a little bit. But, uh, yeah, it's very important to have those guys and and those guys will rely on those guys for information, work ethic, weight room, um, off the field studying, preparation. All that stuff is critical for these young players. They have to have a standard, and that standard better be set high. I watched some of your segments leading up to the draft of Colt McCoy. You guys are evaluating some of the quarterbacks in the draft. Curious your thoughts on Jaden Daniels versus that Drake May debate, because Washington had that number two overall pick. Were you, would you have been inclined to pick Jaden over Drake? from what you saw? I would have, yes. I think Jaden, I, I just like the fact that Jaden played five years, three years at Arizona State, two yeah. years at LSU, and I just think he got progressively better. Uh, at Arizona State, I wasn't a huge fan, but you know, as he just continued to play more and more, he got more comfortable in the pocket. He's more of a quarterback, drop back, passing quarterback, and obviously his skill set outside the pocket running the football is, is, is unmatched by any quarterback in the draft. So, uh, yeah, I, I think you just continue to work with his fundamentals. He's got accuracy. He's got deep arm strength. He's got anticipation. Obviously, he's got the athletic ability. So, yes, I would have taken Jaden. Now, Drake has some ability, but I just think it's going to take Drake more time. I think Washington is not in a position position to play a guy uh, in three, four years. You know, I think Drake may might take a couple of years. I think Jaden's more ready right now for Washington. So when you were with Washington, you guys drafted the late Dwayne Haskins. So that was a rookie quarterback coming in. What did you do with Dwayne to kind of get him settled, get him into the system? And how would you kind of do that with Jaden if you were the coach now? Big difference. Um, you know, Jaden, I think this most the most important thing for Jaden right now is for him to get every single rep, first team rep. When we got Dwayne, we had Colt McCoy coming off an injury. And obviously we had Case Keenum. So we had kind of a three-way competition. And that's not fair for anybody. And that's my biggest regret. I wish I would have named a starting quarterback, let him get all the reps because, you know, you got to have reps. Reps is king for a quarterback. And whether there's their first year guy, whether they're a 10 year guy, you got to give them reps with the people around them. And a three way competition isn't good. So with Jaden, I think 
as soon as he walks in the building, I think he gets every first team rep and uh, he'll grow with the team. And the team will grow with him. Is, you know, we asked Dan Quinn a couple of weeks ago, is he going to, is, is Jaden going to be the week one starter? He didn't commit to that saying when he's ready, he'll, he'll play. But when you draft a quarterback at number two, and I don't know what your mindset was with with the late Dwayne Haskins, do you expect Jaden Daniels to be that starter in week one? I do. Jaden played a lot more football. Jaden played five years of college football. Dwayne only really played one. And yeah. Dwayne needed some time to develop. And uh, we were hopeful that he could come in, pick up the system, maybe eventually be the starter. But he was more of a, a two or three years down the line type guy, not year one. He wasn't quite ready. Um, but Jaden's going to have to be ready. He's played a lot of football. He played in a pro style offense at LSU. Um, Coach Nussmeyer, the offensive coordinator, did a good job with him. So he, he understands run concepts, pass concepts. I think he understands protections pretty well. So, yes, I would name him right now if I were Dan Quinn and make sure he gets all the reps. When I was at Cincinnati, we didn't have a quarterback. We drafted Andy Dalton in the second round. And as soon as he walked in the building, Coach Lewis and I, we both agreed that he would be the starter. And we gave him every single rep in training camp. And uh, and it helped him a lot because uh, got him ready. You got to get him ready and reps are what will get him ready. You've watched some tape on Jaden. You've watched probably some games live on television watching Jaden. How do you think his game's going to translate into the NFL? And what does he have to work on from now until that week one? Well, I think they're going to have to be balanced first and foremost. You know, they're going to have to run the ball. And obviously with Austin Eckler and Brian Robinson Jr., yeah. that'll help a lot. Um, that'll open up the play action games, which will be easy for Jaden. He's very natural in the play action game. He's mostly a shotgun guy, but I think under center, he'll still be effective. Get him outside the pocket, which will make him more comfortable. Obviously, try to stay out of third and long and make it known passing situations. That's tough on any quarterback, but especially rookies. But I think he'll be fine. I think he needs to work on protecting himself a little bit more. He took some major shots against Florida State and some other teams that he has to avoid those because he has to stay healthy. Availability is number one. You see, every year there's... Uh, you know, 12 to 14 teams that are playing two and three quarterbacks. And 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 with Jaden, his style of play, he's going to put himself in harm's way a few times. He's just got to learn how to protect himself because he's no good to anybody when he's on the sideline with a hurt shoulder, hurt back, or whatever it might be. So he's got to work on protecting himself and obviously just continue to grow in the offense, whatever Cliff Kingsbury wants him to do. And uh, and Cliff has to, you know, understand what he's good at and, and they have to work together and find out a good common ground where they can go attack defenses in a, uh, in a, in a great way. If you had the keys of the offense, how would you kind of utilize Jaden and what what type of an offense would you build for Jaden? Yeah, I mean, obviously he's so versatile in what he can do. You know, that's the good thing about Jaden is there's a lot of things. I mean, there's in the running game, I think the running game especially is where they're going to thrive because you always have to take a defender, make sure you account for the quarterback. That's not always the case, and that's going to open up things for Brian Robinson and Austin Eckler, and also if they do collapse. And Jaden Daniel is the type of guy that most guys on zone reads will get six or seven yards. Jaden's a guy that can get 70. You know, so, you know, the running game will be critical for them uh, in unique ways to run the ball. RPOs obviously are easy for Jaden Daniels. He can read a linebacker. If he closes, they throw it in a window that uh, they can replace him. Uh, bootlegs are easy for Jaden. He can get outside the pocket and then he can he can run and he can obviously uh, throw the ball down the field. But, uh, you know, I, I just think that there's there's so many different ways you can attack. But you got to be kind of simple because he is a rookie. You got to make sure that he understands what he's supposed to do and where he's supposed to go and make sure he's protected because defenses aren't just going to let him, uh, you know, run outside the pocket. They're going to have people outside. They're going to have edge guys uh, protecting the outside. So he's going to have to make sure that he hands the ball off when he's supposed to and uh, throws it away when he has to throw it away. Uh, this fan base is clearly excited about Jaden and the possibility of he being finally the answer maybe at the quarterback position. But there's also – some hesit hesitancy with the fan base, seeing that comparison to a Robert Griffin III. Obviously, Robert got hurt, not all his fault. Are, do you see similar skill sets with Jaden and Robert? Some say Jaden is a much better passer coming out. 100%. You know, and Robert uh, came from Baylor, and their, their pass offense is pretty simple. They were more of a one-read type guy. If he wasn't yeah. there, Robert would take off and run. LSU did some good things past conceptually wise. And, and like I said, Doug Nussmeyer did a good job as offensive coordinator, three level throws, you know, they high load hook defenders and did a lot of good things that pro style offenses do. And, and I really like the way Jaden uh, became more of a, he could work progressions. He could get off his first progression to his second progression at Arizona state. He was more of a, that guy's covered. I'm gone. You know, he's developed into more of a pocket passer. And obviously with the ability to run, 
uh, you're going to see limited coverages, which is good. You're not going to see a two man in any of these match coverages where you don't have somebody spying on the quarterback with Jaden Daniels because he'll kill you. So uh, I think defenses will be pretty simple for him. Um, and, and then he just got to make sure that he understands past concepts and gets them to the right people and move the chains. Obviously, you put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in this franchise, and um, this franchise is still important to you in a sense. To see where it where it's at right now, new owner, new front office, new head coach, new quarterback, fan base is excited. What is that like for you to kind to kind of see maybe finally this is heading in in a good direction? Yeah, for sure, it, it's nice. You know, I know Dan Quinn's a good good guy and a good football coach, and. Um, you know, they just got to make the right decisions. You know, hopefully they made the right decision on offensive coordinator. Hopefully they yeah. made the right decision at quarterback. You know, defensively, they had a lot of holes. You know, they lost a couple of good pass rushers and Chase Young and Montez Sweat. They got to replace those guys. They got the kid from Dallas, but I think defensively, they're still going to struggle a little bit. Uh, and offensively, they had to address the offensive line, which they did. They got the center from Dallas, which is good. And uh, drafted a tackle, so that that's going to help them out a little bit. They got a tight end. They got Zach Ertz, and I think they drafted one. <laughs> excuse me, in a second or third round, so that'll help them out. So, uh, but it's still going to be based on you know how they handle the quarterback position, and that's going to be the key for a lot of these teams going into the regular season. There's going to be four or five starting rookie quarterbacks, some other quarterbacks with some questions. How Jaden plays, how Cliff Kingsbury handles Jaden Daniels will be the key for Washington's success moving forward. And the mental makeup of Jaden is probably important, too, because you're probably going to have some struggles as a rookie quarterback. How he handles that will probably go a long way toward what type of quarterback he's going to be two or three years down the road. Yeah, and that's a big concern with a lot of guys coming out now because of the portal and guys are getting paid in college football. You know, you don't like it at Arizona State, I'll just quit and go to LSU. You know, you can't just quit now. You have to stick with the plan and you're stuck here at Washington and you got to get better. You got to handle adversity, and there will be a lot of it. Dallas is a good football team. Philly's a good football team. Uh, the New York Giants got a lot better with uh, the receiver from LSU. They're going to be a good football team. So uh, there's going to be a lot of competitive football teams. You're not going to win every game. How you handle adversity, how you handle getting a sack, how you handle getting shut out in a quarter is going to be uh, critical in his success. But I think Jaden's a pretty tough-minded guy. You can see he's a great competitor, and I think he'll be fine. All right, great stuff, great insight, great perspective. Jay Gruden, great catching up with you. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, much more to come right here on Toyota Sports Talk. Stay with us.